Turkey, the program is Basi Starfish, our language core. Uh, remember, you can always type the name of the program and go to YouTube and we watch it. If I'm going too fast, do, again, due to the shortness of the program, I have to go really fast. Uh, my theory is that um, every language is just uh, she coming out from one single core. I will start it right now because time is short, okay? So I will start this. And once again, this is the basket starfish. And I believe, because I believe that uh, we are not separate uh, tree families. Uh, believing in tree families, we will only usher in human hierarchy, which tree comes first or which come later. And, and by only understanding language as sharing one single core and every single culture is just a branch, I think we can look at the world in a more equal way. And then uh, I think the, that's why the tree family business need to be changed and uh, again also uh, the the world now is full of this Eurocentric view and uh, this Eurocentric view of understanding everything is always a linear thing and always upward and downward in a vertical way and the patriarchs talk over the world you know and then it changed the world into a very hierarchical uh, way and that's why we have so many caste system you know uh, we have so many uh, royal families that only based on the male uh, member of the family which is actually the reverse from the very ancient time so I suppose I propose that we look at the same thing from a different angle and uh, what you saw was a root and this is also a root but a cross-section so um, I, I keep saying that I am looking at it from a very different perspective I look at it based on life because based on, on my uh, more than 20 something actually more than 30 something years of traveling but the old, last 20 something years I concentrated in looking for the call of this the, the sounds of the languages okay so uh, this is uh, more like oriental and female rather than eurocentric and patriarchal okay so um, I propose that we actively look around the 360 degrees outward or inward instead of keep looking down and down and up like that uh, you know forming a hi very hierarchical uh, point of view that uh, determine our way of looking at the people around us too okay? Okay, so once again, I use this image, you know, because all over the education system now, whenever they talk about the Ice Age, you can always see an image like this. But I will propose an image like this, you know, instead of, you know, everything in a cold region, you know, because this is a Eurocentric and patriarchal view. And you will actually see a, a more normal view from a very tropical place, you know, the uh, source of origin is always grass. And then uh, even if you look at this you know you will always notice that there is a soft power behind it who made all these threads and things that tie the animal skin up it's always the female and in my past um, programs I always you know stress again and again that without a humble little mat or the carpet on the floor no man can actually sit down and perfect the stone tool so there's always a bilateral you know development of human development so no man can own can can develop you know human culture as it is now without the female help okay so um uh, this uh program this week you know i will continue talking about the sound of the grass you know which is also a source of life i i put this sword sound you know in red because uh all the following slide you will see that it is the s you know that also dominate a big part of our human uh, speech in sound okay so uh, as I said, uh, grass is a source of life. It's also a source of our words. And um, if you will see that, you know, uh, instead of showing you everything linear, you know, I keep turning around and telling you that everything goes in a cycle and also you know uh, they like a big bang you know goes out from a center and if we take our Sumerian pictograph you know um, uh, cuneiform I should say uh, uh, it, this is sars meaning a piece of grass okay of course there are different way of saying it you know I already show you you know in the past you know uh, that uh, the, it can also represent the G or the K sound but uh, this few last 
few weeks I have been concentrating on the S sound so uh, look at how I understand the world as I travel around using my ears in places where I shouldn't be able to understand their writing okay so but uh, this week I also want to concentrate using the English word to show you that English is also so connected to the center as well. So English is not anything new and English is not only connected to this so-called Indo-European language. It actually is still uh, linked to the center center where every single human language should find their own core. Okay, so um, uh, if you look, pick an English word, you know, to the uh, uh, equivalent to the uh, graph, you can think of the sedge. The sedge, you know, where uh, the ancient use it to make a lot of things, of course, you know, in order to be able to, to hunt and, and eat, you know, you have to make a sieve, you know, because in that way you can put it in the river. It actually become a thing for you to catch fish. So this word, even in English, still follow the very uh, ancient and then um, also you know from that you know uh, this is the first domestication of the plant you can easily go to the word seed and of course you know the seed is the source of life and also you know the source of a lot of our uh, ability to survive in this world okay and then of course you know when we started domesticate you know different grass and and, and grasses begin to grow and then uh, we begin to have the idea of station in one place and also because of the making of the grass you can also um, turn the place into your seed which means your home okay and of course you know the English word shed is also come from that because the early houses were also made of a lot of grasses and also on the other side after we domesticate you know plant we started to also domesticate animal of course you will see that the world zoo you will say that it come from Greek and but then I can s tell you that it is the whole system together after we domesticate a uh, plant we also domesticate animal and then that's why in English word you still have the word sassy sassy in a way if you look it up you know it means you know someone full of spirit you know so it is uh, actually a, in, a, in a good sense but of course now slowly slowly in, in life uh, the meaning also keep changing sometimes it can be used negatively but you will see that this word you know as the grass and then this is the uh, the growth spirit of the grass if you go to a place full of grass it is a place full of animal as well okay so apply it to human beings Sasi is also a person with a lot of spirit you know very positive and also because we begin to domesticate all these uh, pl uh, plants and animals and then uh, it comes to the idea of the same you know the same is at that we begin to uh, gather things up we begin to to uh, you know accumulate things and then also uh, uh, come to the word sash sash is when we started to trail things and make our robes and make our uh, clothes and then the sash is also one of the wood but then because we uh, we start to gather things up you know this sash is kind of a, a used in a different sense because this one easily uh, linked to the what you think is the Persian word Shah Shah is the head of the line Sash is actually the line and Shah is the head of the line and by that time we already you know link all this word to the human lineage and if you stay with the program until the end you will see the, all the in all the uh, European uh, royal family they were all wearing this blue sash and this is you know from the ancient time it was already there to show the line the lineage of that royal family but of course you know they, they transfer from the female side to the male side okay so this week, week I will uh, basically cover all this the following slide I will just give you a number of English words to show you how easily we are connected by the sim simple sound okay so um, now I travel around the world you know I always catch that core sound and then um, the S core sound is a, has a lot to do with life's basic and so uh, again I show you this SARS in Sumerian 
and, and gradually this grass was weaved into you know a, a mat and then they still carry the sun star and then uh, uh, what they call is a reed bundle you know when you bundle reed up you know actually you can use it as a, a trap you can use it as a wall whatever it is still carry the sun star and and I will show you in real pictures like this so you understand better what I mean and then uh, now I'm showing you Chinese oracle bones and then the sound it carries also say sao or sea it has a lot also to do with sieve and also the net of catching things and you will see that you know image wise you know they actually uh, very um, similar to each other this is Sumerian right here and this is Chinese right there and then uh, we need different symbol to distinguish the utensils so these things actually later become you know our sieve and 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 carry all this size sound see sound okay even the english word of course sieve is still uh, the same so you will see that as i travel around you see a lot of these things of course if you live in the city you don't pay attention to them but they are all the roots of your speech okay so um this uh slide is full of english you will understand how words are link okay so the word sieve you know you can see it's very easy to even link to the Chinese Cantonese sound as well and then the sieve and then the saying as the the net that catch fish and then of course the verb sift and then uh, when you sift you actually to separate the grain you know from the husk so you will see that um, it still carries on and the word sow so uh, is to distribute the uh, scattered around the seeds you know so because you separate them and that's how you sow the seed and then of course you know just by the action you have shake shock shiver and then uh, this gradually change, you know, from the, from the sieve itself, it shiver becomes you, the human being themselves. And then, of course, you know, uh, the seismic, as I said, you know, it actually to do with earthquake, you know. So all these words, either from shaking the sieve or to you shaking or the earth shaking, all from the same core, from the same idea, okay. And of course, you know, this uh, uh, word, you know, soak is actually a Turkish word. I remember when I lived in Turkey in the 80s you know uh, the first word I learned in the winter was when I was so cold when I was shivering and I just uh, learned the first word you know by the people around me telling me soak soak that means cold and and of course you know um, if you transfer it to English it's definitely just like the shock word okay so actually a lot of the language actually transfer from one culture to another like that not as the uh, linguist would tell you because people travel people carry their word they do not depend on their dictionary it is depend on their personal experience exactly like how, how I pick up languages okay so also from here if you can picture you know the mat itself it can also change to the seed and even in Egyptian hieroglyph you will see that this so-called so throne and chair itself already carry this sound the seed okay so uh, you can imagine the same weave you know you just elevate it it's still a seed for uh, for us till this very day of course in English you have the seed of the sedan and then depends on how you sit okay and then of course you you know that seat so-called seat is just a no, not a normal seat because this seat is carried on the head of Isis the, the mother goddess in the ancient Egypt you know and then for them this seat is actually to sit there to give birth to babies so you will see that this is actually carry a very strong word that's why the word seat and seat is actually very very similar even in English so uh, every single culture develop their meaning in their way but you can always find that if um, uh, in a culture some word disappear it will actually reappear in another culture that's how I always find words just according to their sounds okay so the seed and also the word sire of course now you understand sire as the male parent you know of the, um, the the family line so and also semen because it also links to the seed as well and of course you know if I go 
to show you this uh, raw material when you lived in um, uh, less developed countries you will always see places like this where you sit and then you will see that you know the sassy wood actually comes from all these grasses you have full of spirit if a place is full of life that means it's full of grass okay so um, of course you know full of what grass is full of sedge and with this sedge you can make into a lot of things and then the grass actually surge up rise up from the ground and also become the source of a lot of things either than the source of material it become the source of life too because animals eat them and you eat the animals okay so um set sail also become a stem where you station and then uh become the shrub and then shaggy you know because uh, even animal uh, have a lot of hair if they are strong they are healthy and then also shift which is the shell of the uh, plants which we use to build which become shed and also shed or shanty town or become your shelter or, sh or become a shade because if you put it up become a shade the shadow and then uh, because you build this shed you shut yourself up and isolate yourself and also asylum so all these are connected in a very very deep sense of course you know the linguist will tell you a straight line you know this word come from this come from this but you have to understand human mind actually understand things in a 360 degrees as their life give them experience okay so now I go back to this sign. If I also go back, you know, if I turn all this hay into the green thing, and then you will know that different geographic locations have different plant life. Okay, there's a bunch of moss, and then you will say the sock and the, the and the soggy place. You know, all these words also come from that idea of the very wet grass or underneath you. Okay, so also uh, because of the ground, you also use this to put some. Uh, to weave something into your shoes so you see uh, in a place as a short place you also wear a short which is your shoes okay so all these are English words they actually connected in real life not connected in a linguistic way okay so um, I show you this because this is the Chinese you know way of writing a sieve and you will see that the sieve which uh, gradually has become something like this of course this is a sieve for flour we did develop different kinds of sieve but um, because sieve is kind of transparent everything uh, comes through it you can actually select good things out of it and that's why as the sieve itself actually become the symbol of our wisdom in human language like the English word sabir and sabi savan and sage all this word actually come from the symbolism of the sift itself because you are so clear you see things clearly or you can sift out all those useless information so you are sage but uh, a lot of the English word also stand in the middle the sage other you can understand is a very clever person is actually a, a, a herb you know a grass itself so everything goes back even if you look at this word so there if you pronounce it differently so it actually means an animal so a lot of these words actually have a hidden life you know so we all understand things in their context sometimes we forgot that they actually have a different 360 degrees meaning with them okay so nothing is linear okay so I will show you once again uh, you have uh, we used to have grass above and under all around us this is the Sumerian pic uh, cuneiform saw and I can give you a picture like this and then uh, of course when I go to all these less developed places everywhere you go you know even the roof the wall the door they are all made of some uh, the same material so that's how you know we human beings had to find words to distinguish them sometimes you know the ash stick with just one thing they use a K or G to you to for the other area but um, if you are patient enough to find you will always find the link of all these and then this is a Chinese pictograph you can see that it's actually very similar to this for us it's pronounced it's say say it's actually mean a shed okay a shed or a shack okay so you see this sa shed sh, uh, shed shack 
said and they are all the same thing okay so um other than that you have uh you have to walk in order to protect your feet you have to use the same grass to to weave them okay so if i look at french this is french okay shoes actually means you know something underneath you and you are on something okay you are on something but shoe and shoe look at that you know exactly only that we use it in a different sense okay so the short also is a word for it to mean shoes too and then of course you know if you use uh, the grass above us instead of underneath us it become a shade and then in in French uh, the shade will, will be sombra and when it changed to Spanish uh, sombra it becomes sombra in Spanish and then sombrero what is sombrero sombrero is actually this hat that you know so you will see that you know every single culture develop uh, their words according what they have at that moment in front of them so it is not a linear thing like the linguists keep telling you okay so I will also show you the Korsang in other systems other after uh, showing you so many English words so these are the Sumerian sa 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 sang from the pictograph you can understand either it's a piece of brass a mat or some reed bundle and then I will show you a picture this is hieroglyph so pick uh, you can see that the hieroglyph all these different plants you know from upper Egypt lower Egypt whatever they are they still carry all this same sound and of course you know this I can show you because I, I lived in Egypt for a while and then you will see that this is the grass what they mean okay the pamper grass right there and then you will see that the psalm right there, of course, this is Phoenician summer. So then a lot of them will tell you summer means the sky. But I can tell you that summer actually means to gather things together. When you gather all this grass together to make them into something. Because the summer in a lot of languages is actually carry the meaning of gathering things together. And even in Chinese, the symbol itself means gather. <clears throat> And before we use it to mean gather, it was also used as a single piece of grass, okay? And then we have all these words. Uh, you can see this is the early picture. This is the later writing, early picture, later writing. And then uh, we have other writing, you know, uh, the sa. Sa actually developed into different writing, sa or so. It actually definitely means the sage or the satin, okay? So look at the other side of the world, the Turkish. Sars. Look at this. This is this is sa sars sars. Okay, this is Turkish. What does it mean? It means read. So we are all using the same sound, meaning the same thing itself. Okay, the Hungarian sa. What is sa? Sa means the stem and the stalk. And when we make all this um, sieve and fish trap and everything, it's always the stem and the stalk that we use. Okay, so this is a very interesting thing that I found in Hungarian. And then you look at it, you know, it uh, it it's it spells, you know, doesn't really reflect the pronunciation. Actually, this is pronounced as sa, but this has a very interesting sound. It's jet. Jet actually means the seat the stool and the chair. When I heard it, I actually understand it perfectly in Cantonese because in Cantonese there is the word zha, uh, which what it means is exactly this. It means a, a mat. So when the Chinese still maintain the ancient meaning, the mat, the Hungarian already used the sound to mean a seat, a stool, a chair. That means they, they are already using the word in a much later sense when they elevate themselves above the ground. Only the Chinese were using it uh, to stick to this object itself. Okay, so also the seat is also in the same system as I said the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph still means the seat so you will see that we keep changing the word but the material was still the same okay so but unfortunately when I was looking for images to show you I see how the our um, unbalanced world now that all of us are so ready to abandon our culture we are all looking to the west so we are throwing all the old culture away this is an image of the um, 
of the river in uh, India, you will see that we are throwing a lot, other than all the plastic bags that we have, we are throwing a lot away our own old culture, including this mat itself. This is something that I was very familiar as a child in China. So this is not just India. That we The speed that we are throwing away the original culture is amazing. The more we throw it away, the less we are connected to the real uh, core of our ancient languages. The more we believe that we are separated, the more we look at the world with Eurocentric view, I think this is a little bit dangerous. We need to rectify ourselves and we need to present the healthy view that both of us, East and West, actually we develop things together. We are not um, only, you know, chasing after the Eurocentric view, okay? So again, uh, through all this searching, I understand my own culture actually through another culture. The Hungarian word Zek and the Chinese Cantonese song of Zek, 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 okay? So it means a mat or it actually somehow used to mean the banquet, okay? So I was uh, amazed, you know, when I understand this jig also. Nowadays, when I say jig, it actually means a banquet seat. But how is it? But when I look into the dictionary, it actually give me a clue. You know, it shows that a mat with a cover. And of course, you know, under the sun, you need uh, something to cover to protect yourself. Until I lived in Yemen, then every day when I eat, you know, when I go to a banquet also, you know, I will always sit around a mat itself. This is exactly in the Cantonese sense a deck. That actually means a banquet seat, okay? So this is what is interesting. Then I compare this with the Sumerian. This is still in the sense of sip and willow, we, uh, window. So you will see that uh, the ancient use was still there very, very clearly, okay? So um, I will stop right here once again. I prepare a lot of slides and I don't want to stuff too much into your brain. I hope you can go to YouTube, type in the program name again and watch it again. I This week I use English to make you understand how close languages are. English is not new and no uh, and nothing has been lost. We are still speaking the core sound of it. Uh, only grammar separates us. So. Uh